Hello and welcome to another episode of Vanilla City Skylines where we are building the city of Minoqua Bay. Last episode we worked on building up a pedestrianized town center as well as building our first apartment complex within the city. Today we're going to come over here where we have a bunch of fertile land and work on building up our farming industry to satisfy some of our industrial demand. So first thing that we need to do is we're gonna come over here and get rid of all of this office space that we zoned in the previous episode just to help uh, get us the residential demand we needed to build this apartment complex. And I'm going to delete these houses as well that sit right along some of our fertile land. Alright, so first things first, we need to get our highway infrastructure ready for uh, this industrial area. And we want to be careful to make sure that we're not sending this industrial traffic through this interchange or through this interchange just to make sure that our traffic flow uh, remains fairly high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this road a little bit and kind of bow it out towards the coastline. Next what I want to do is I'm going to come into my highways and we're just going to extend this a little bit so that we can have a good road guideline to go off. And I'm actually going to come to our content creator roads and use the three line, uh, three lane viaduct. So we're going to elevate just a little bit to go over the road and then come back on this side and do the same. So that now we have a marker of where the highway is going to cross on this road. So now I'm going to come back and delete this little extension of highway that we built. And now I'm going to come and raise our terrain a little bit to match where this highway bridge is at in height. So now we're going to come down and connect in on that side. And now we're going to do the same on this side as well. And although we could have a highway intersection right here, I want to get the highway intersection a little bit more centralized within this industrial district that we're about to create. So now let's come to our slope tool just so that we can kind of smooth this down, make it a little bit more realistic. And after our highway gets to this uh, height, we're going to keep it at this height through the remainder of the city, just to give us a little extra layer of height. So now let's come in and level out the terrain that we're going to build our highway on. And just come straight across using our road guidelines. And this will get extended as we build it out. So I think what I want to do is we're going to make a four lane collector road. that mirrors this, but also intersects over here with this street. And we also want to make sure that it's not too close to the intersection that we already have. I think I'm going to put it here. That might be a little bit too close. So let's maybe come here. We'll just come out by a distance of 700. And then use our curve tool to connect in. 
And so now we can come in with our one lane roads and connect into this road. Or one way, two lane roads rather. So that we have uh, these connections in. I wonder, we could probably even fit something over here. Or not. Maybe a large playground. That would work. I don't know. We can play around with that later on in the episode. So what I'm going to do now is going to build out uh, some basic infrastructure for our farming industry. just to make sure that we have a nice wide grid. And I think this can be the area where we have most of the uh, actual farms and plantations located. So I'm gonna mirror this road with our collector road. We're going to come probably about there because I know that this is going to be approximately where we're going to have the intersection located. So let's go ahead and build out the intersection. So we want to treat it kind of like it's a trumpet interchange just because it's going to uh, likely be a, um, a three-way intersection rather than a four-way intersection because this road is not going to extend across the water. So just gonna level this out a tiny bit more. And now we're gonna come in and level this out. So let's treat this like a trumpet interchange. Just like we're building a standard trumpet interchange with uh, two highways. We might even want to make this a T interchange. We'll see how this works out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a gravel road with this road guideline. Just extend it out in both directions. Now we're going to come with our highway exit ramp and try to line this up as centrally as we can. And now we're going to take some two lane roads with grass and line those up in the center of these highway exit ramps that we just built and then connect in using the freeform tool to our collector road, reversing the direction of that and these so that our directions are correct. So now I'm going to hook in these highway exit ramps into these two lane roads and make sure that our directions are correct. Cool. So now I'm going to extend this out just a tiny, tiny little bit and we want to make sure that we're getting to both directions of the highway. So this outer section right here is going to connect up with this portion of the highway. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click, right click uh, with our slope tool right next to the highway. We're going to curve this out a little bit. And now just follow what we just sloped out. And now we have the first part of our exit ramp and entrance ramp built. Now I'm just going to come straight across with these two parts of the exit ramp, which are both going to connect to this side of the highway. 
And now that we have that built, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend this out up to these exit ramps. And again, we're going to go to our content creator pack and use the three lane viaduct. Viaduct, however you say it. We want to make sure that that is still pretty much level with where we're at, and it is. Line up with that road guideline. And of course it wants to be finicky. I don't know, I think it looks like that's going up a little bit. We don't want that. So let's right click here and see. Okay. So that terrain is just a tiny bit higher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna level this out so that our bridge stays at the correct height. Kind of come, I think probably there should do the trick. And as you can see, this is nice and level. So we're gonna come back to our highways, to our exit ramps, and just bring these straight under the bridge that we just built. Right click here to level out this terrain. And go back to uh, our content creator pack highway and just bring this back down to the terrain. Which I think that might be a little bit too far Just come out a distance of 900 units. Let's turn off the road guidelines. Which, this isn't. Turning the road guidelines off in this scenario isn't really going to affect our ability to zone like it would if we were having random road guidelines snapping with our normal roads that we have for our neighborhoods and industrial areas. So now we're going to take a similar approach that we used on this side, and I think I'm probably going to need to extend the highway out a little bit more in order to have enough room for this. So we're going to extend that out by a distance of 1260. Yep, that is still level. But just to be sure, we're going to level that out just a little bit more. So again, we're going to take our slope terrain tool right click, and then come here and just slope it out. And then just try to follow that terrain with our exit ramp. And then reverse our directions, just to make sure that everyone is going the correct way. So now comes if we were gonna build a T intersection, this is where it would get a little tricky because both of these connect to this highway, but this one has to connect here because we're coming off and coming around. And this one has to connect as if it's over here so that it can come here and go that direction. So one of the ways that we can get around it uh, just to prevent us from having to build a complicated T interchange is we can use a trumpet interchange. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to extend this in what's going to be the inside circle. I'm going to come to the lowest elevation step, come out by a distance of five, out by a distance of five again with our curve tool, go up one step, 
and let's turn off the road guidelines just to make sure that this curve is nice and smooth. We're just going to pull that grading out temporarily. We'll put it back in as soon as we have this built. And of course I didn't go out far enough. Which is one of the frustrating aspects of building the trumpet interchange. So let's try this again. Go out by a distance of five. Out by a distance of five. Up one. Out five, out five, up one. And you can see we're getting a nice even slope as we come up. Five. And just to be sure, this is the one that has to end going this way. So we're going to come out by five, out by five again, up by one. And now we can uh, come up to that terrain height. Now we're just going to soften this terrain a little bit. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out, go up one again, up the three that we just did to connect that across what we just built. Now that that is in there, I'm going to come down and hook into our highway, which I think that might be a little too much or a little too steep of a curve there. Nope. Not going to let us do that. That's fine. We'll just connect in like that. Those trucks will have a lot of fun with that. I can already tell. So now we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. We want to make sure that we have the same level of terrain. That way we don't get any uh, accidents happening when we build out. So now we're just going to come out a little bit with our freeform tool, which will help us line up with these road guidelines, which I think what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to click that to level it out. And now I'm going to slope around this ramp, which should allow us to have a nice smooth ramp. But keep in mind that this ramp has to uh, connect in over here. Good. I think, I don't know, we can uh, see how this plays out, but I think having this intersection may prove to be a bad idea just because, like I said, we want to make sure that our trucks that are shipping out what we're making in this industrial area over here are coming and getting on the highway using this interchange and not traveling through the city and using that interchange. Which, what we can do is we can build a small district right here. 
and this district is really just going to serve it for functionality purposes and nothing else. We're going to come to our policies under city planning and we're going to ban heavy traffic. Which means that we're not going to be able to zone any businesses in this area, which is fine. I don't think we're going to need to zone any business in this area right here. And we could possibly even just build out a small city park. Cool. So what I'm going to do is we're going to come to our farming industry tab. And we're going to place down our industrial main building. Which, is, now that we already have uh, an industrial area on the other side, I can just place it and it's automatically going to start to paint out the district. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the district up to the highway, or at least up to the interchange. We're going to come like this, and we're just going to zone this square for now. We will probably, actually probably most definitely be extending this later. So now what I want to do is we're going to come in with I think some small fruit fields, just because we are in a tropical climate, would be nice. We're going to have them first all along this road, making sure that we are getting the 4,800 units per week. It's going to be a little finicky if I try to put it there. That's fine. So now that we know exactly where that's going. We can come in with our gravel road down by a distance of 200. We're going to connect in over there. Down by 200. And connect in. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some farming fence and I'm going to fence off at least this portion. Maybe more. It just depends on how much space we have to zone with. Or to place these down with. So now I'm going to come through and make sure that everything is oranges. These are going to be orange groves. We don't want the greenhouses right here. I think the greenhouses have too much of an industrial look for what we are going for here. Which, if we were doing this as more of an urbanized uh, farming industry, closer to our downtown, we would want to use these greenhouses just because of the very industrial look that they have. But because we're in more of a suburban-ish area, we're just going to use the orange groves, which we can actually continue using, can we? Yeah, that'll be okay. But as we get down here, we start losing a little bit more uh, productivity just because the land isn't as fertile, and that's fine. So we're just going to continue coming through, make sure that we have oranges. I'm going to come through, let's turn off our guidelines, just to finish out our farm fence and connect in there. And uh, I think, do we want to use maybe some rocks? like we've been using, I think we should do that. Just because the rocks, I don't think, are going to affect how fertile this land is going to be as badly as trees will. So we come in with our vegetation. Just to kind of help line this out. We're going to place just a few small trees. 
just to give us a little bit of color variation around here. Not going to worry with placing any of our big trees. And that should be fine. So let's see, we have 530 available jobs. We're going to come in and uh, use our improved logistics and our improved work safety supervision. And we also need to make sure that we have water. So we need 14,000 for that. I don't think we're gonna need any water, any more water towers just yet, but we will see. Speed this up a little bit. Let's just see how we're doing here. 105 tons. Not bad. And it's not generating a ton of traffic either. Oh, yes it is. And as you can see, a lot of the trucks are preferring to come and use this part of the highway. Which is good, that is what we want. I think we can probably fill this area out with some more residential as well. So let's come in, upgrade you. I wonder. Because, so what I'm thinking about is, I think I'm going to reconfigure this highway interchange, which I personally have never liked. Um, but I also want to have kind of a curved grid. I think that could be cool. Let's upgrade you into the correct kind of road. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kinda try to curve around a little bit. And I'm gonna turn our road guidelines on just to make sure that we are following the curve as best as we can. Which we may have to use our curve road tool instead and that's totally fine. Now we want to connect that in. And now this will be uh, just a four lane road. wonder, maybe we should tunnel under the highway here. And then come back out. And that'll allow us to build along this beachfront. Cool. All right, so we have reached level two with our farming industry which unlocks the flour mill, the bakery, farm workers barracks, cattle shed, and a small barn. But before we go in and do anything about that, I want to finish building up this area so that we can have some more residents. So I'm gonna come through just make sure that hmm that means we severed that connection to the highway oh well not a big deal 
So we're gonna come through with our water network. Try to be as close to under the road as we can. It's not gonna be perfect. And that's fine. Just to make sure that when people move in, they're going to have water. They're already pretty much gonna have electricity and actually that was a mistake. Hold on, let's pause for a second. Well, more than a second. We want to have our path network coming through. Just to encourage uh, pedestrian traffic. I think on this side we're gonna do it like here maybe? That should be fine. And come along here. Very nice. Because this is a new area, I think we can look at zoning in a different kind of residential look. So over here, we're going to use our green cities, uh, self-sufficient buildings, specialization for this residential zone. Just come in, zone it all up, except along this collector road. I'm gonna try not to get too, too close to the highway because we're gonna get some awkward terraforming once uh, we start heading around here. We wanna make sure that we're able to buffer out some of the noise pollution that is gonna come from the highway. Which the first step that we can take towards doing that is including a sound barrier on this highway. We're just gonna extend our noise barrier all the way down to our first intersection and beyond it. Every time, every single time. Don't you just love how it wants to upgrade things that are not a highway into a highway road. Absolutely lovely. Cool. So now we're gonna let this come in as Green City Specialization. And that'll be nice. So now that we have these orange groves, we're gonna build out another section of this industrial area. And we're going to want to make sure that we use our one-way roads, which are a lot better for industrial traffic. So we're going to just get a first little section of this grid out. And now we're going to come to our districts tab and continue to extend our industrial area. So the first thing we're going to put in is a little flour mill, which we want to be sure to frame. And now I'm going to flip it so that we are prioritizing the flow of traffic on this semi ring kind of industrial road. Of course, come through and hook in the water. We definitely want to make sure that we are doing that. That was a lot faster than I was expecting. So now we are at level three, which unlocks the milking parlor. It unlocks the medium fruit field and the medium crop field as well. Well, I don't think it unlocks any of that. wonder. So 
Let's extend this down, create a little bit of a frontage road. This is where we can come in with our bakery. I think it'll sit nicely right there. And we're gonna decorate this out a little bit. Come off the road guidelines. I think that works nicely. And we can just come by it with some small rock detailing. A couple of oak trees. Are we going to be able to get a touch of overgrowth? I don't know that we will. That's fine. A couple of these smaller trees. That could be nice for detailing. And now I want to uh, also include a uh, s a couple of warehouses that can sit right. Well, I guess we're only going to get one. And that's fine just to kind of help extend the asset. And what we're gonna store here is our unique factory products. I think right here we can probably come in and start to uh, incorporate some of our water treatment that is polluting very, very heavily over here. You can probably, no, it's not gonna fit there. So we'll have our first little water treatment there, which is nice and far away from our farming and it is far away from our citizens as well. I'm going to frame this with a little sidewalk, which will kind of help to hide the pollution that is going to be generated in this area. We're going to come along here and line this with some oak trees. Very nice. Now we're gonna come up a little bit and kind of extend this industrial ring network that we have. Come back to our farming industry. Next, we wanna make sure that we extend this district out. I'm gonna come in with a milking parlor. which again, we want to prioritize not having traffic coming through uh, our ring road. So I'm gonna flip this. And right next to this milking parlor, I'm gonna put a small animal pasture as well as a cattle shed. and then box that in. I think here again, we're going to, uh, do we want some concrete? Or maybe I think here we can probably get away with using gravel instead because that matches the texture of these buildings a lot better, I think. I think this will be a great place to fit in our slaughterhouse as soon as that is available to us. And as you can see, we still have really, really good traffic flow because we are making sure that there, while there is connectivity, that we also are offering a lot of different options for high capacity uh, movement. 
How close are we? We're pretty close to hitting level 4. But we will take a small break, and as soon as we hit level 4, we will be right back. All right, we just hit level four with our farming industry, which unlocks the clothing factory, the farm maintenance building, the large barn, and the slaughterhouse. So now let's see. I believe our slaughterhouse will, no, it will not fit in this area. How close is it? It's pretty close. Looks like it's only one unit off. Yeah, and also approximately one unit off on this direction. No, it's two units off on this direction. So we're going to pull that temporarily. So that we can place down our slaughterhouse. We can connect in over here. Mm, I don't know. I think that might be a little bit too close. Let's come back a little bit. There we go. That's a little better. Just gonna let that continue to simulate. We're also gonna come in with our large barn on both sides right here. I'm gonna get a pathway right in the center if we can. Let's see if we can. So we're just gonna use our no. Not gonna use road guidelines just yet. So we're gonna click there and now we're gonna use road guidelines. No, we're not. This thing is so finicky. And there, that's close enough. We'll come behind our barns with just a tiny little bit of overgrowth. We can place uh, some trees down as well. Yeah, or not. Isn't that just the saddest looking palm tree you've ever seen? Of course, these barns are going to cause massive traffic jams up front. But in the end, as soon as we get our barns filled up, everything will be fine. So I also want to build our farm maintenance building, which I think we can place down here. And that'll be just fine. We'll come in with a gravel path. This time we're going to turn our snap twos back on. I think what I can do is we're going to come there. And similarly to what we were doing with our road detailing over here, we're just going to come with our farm fence. Right alongside this, uh, turn on road guideline temporarily just so that we have something we can hook on to. Which apparently it does not want to do that. That's fine. We can just delete the path and then connect the path back in. Ah. Uh, no, that's not what we wanted. That is not what we wanted. So let's try this again. Turn off road guidelines. That's going to go there. And that's going to go there. That comes there. You hook in, you hook in. And we will continue this path detailing alongside this road with our farm fence. And 
And now we're going to come in with our oak trees that we had on the other side. And just keep them in a nice straight line. Alright, so our traffic flow is back up to 90%. We have our barns stored pretty, pretty well. So let's see what else we can build over here. Is anything else going to unlock as far as processing buildings? No, it will not, other than a large animal pasture, which I'm going to elect not to build in uh, this area. So I think what I can do is I can place another cattle shed next to uh, some more um, some more animal pastures. We want to make sure that yes, we have cows just because all of these other assets are very much oriented towards cows and not towards, uh, you know, pigs, sheep and whatnot. Although this one looks like, nope, that is a cow. That is definitely a cow. Those are all cows. All, all of those are cows. And that's fine. Ooh, I am worried though, just because of where this intersection is that it could interrupt our traffic flow later on down the line. I don't know, we'll see. We will see. But in the meantime, we are going to wait and let our farming industry hit level five and we will be right back. All right, our farming industry just hit level five, which unlocks the large grain silo, the large animal pasture, the food factory, large crop field, and the large fruit field. Off camera, I just uh, extended this a little bit. We were having a lot of traffic backup, so what I did was I uh, upgraded this into a four-lane one-lane, uh, four-lane one-way road. And I also added in a warehouse just so that we would have somewhere to store all of this animal product that we were producing. I um, believe that we still have a little bit of demand for storage space in our uh, crops. So what I'm going to do, which is going to be absolutely horrible for our traffic flow, is we're going to uh, place in some s of these large grain silos. Which I think we can fit one in right here next to this warehouse. So I'm going to delete that little cut through road. Come back in. Place. Yeah, that'll work. So let's come back in with this industrial road. I'm going to turn the grain silo to face here, right up against our large warehouse. I'm going to place four of them and then just add a little gravel path right there, just to kind of help uh, make this area look very industrial. Come out here, extend that. And let's check on our bakery, which it seems to be pretty well stocked. So I'm just gonna increase the production rate to 150% so that we will have stuff to store in our unique factory warehouse yard. Or our products for a unique factory products small warehouse. 
I think I'm saying that right. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know if I am. But it's fine. Let's also uh, come and extend this industrial district just a tiny, tiny little bit. And as soon as these silos are stocked, traffic will dissipate. Everything will be fine. Maybe. Possibly. Um, just to make sure that we are uh, supplying our bakery really well, I'm going to build in another one of our um, flour mills. I think behind here can again fit in some of these large grain silos just to, again, increase the industrial look of this area, which I think that might be a little too tall. Let's see about that work. It's a little too small. I don't like the way that barn looks. What about that? Do I like the way that looks? And then we can just kind of come in and use this space for some detailing. All right, so now that, I'm just gonna kind of wait for some of this traffic to clear and I think I might wanna look into some different roads to use in this area because uh, we do want to start incorporating some public transit and making transit readily available. So I think over here in uh, Sycamore Square, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to come to our trams and we're going to start incorporating some tram networks into our city. I'm going to come and kind of detail this up a little bit with uh, some small tram roads, tram only roads rather. Just to kind of function as a tram storage space. I'm going to turn on our road guidelines. Just kind of continue uh, extending that out, which I think looks kind of nice. All right. So now we can start using some of uh, our new tram roads that we got in our uh, in the update. So we're gonna use this new uh, two-lane road with tram tracks, which has the trams separated from our normal traffic by placing them in the center of the road. So we're going to come down to the elementary school, and now we're going to turn our tram route to go through Mulberry Street, which we're going to use our small sandstone pedestrian street with tram tracks. And now we're going to use a four lane road with bicycle lanes and tram tracks so that we can also have a pretty decent cycling network as well. So we're going to have this extend all the way down our main street. I would use that one, but the issue I have with this one is that, um, and here I'll show it to you. If we were to use this one, yes, we have the bicycle lanes, 
but the issue that we have is we have the tram tracks and the cars sharing the same path, which we don't want. We want the tram tracks to be separated from the traffic. So we're gonna have a Our tram tracks come up this road and come across. Distance too short. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. So let's turn that back into uh, just a regular two lane road with grass. We'll have our tram tracks extend this way. And right in front of our shopping center. That will complete that loop, I believe. We also want to make sure that um, we're providing uh, transit access to our industrial areas as well. So what I'm going to do, first off, we need to turn those back into regular roads. I come down this street with our tram tracks. I think we should probably, uh, I think we'll go that way. Is there a one-way version of this? Let's see. Um, so there is a two-lane one-way road available, but... Uh, it again does not treat us very nicely. Oh, four lane, nope. That's fine. Um, so I think we can maybe make this bus. Yeah, we'll just use buses over here, just because that's going to be a, a huge, huge problem. So we're going to come here with our tram tracks and just connect down. Yeah, or maybe do we want bicycle lanes instead? I think we'll do bicycle lanes. And then that will bring us right back to our tram station. All right. So now let's build uh, some routes. Let's start there. Have a stop next to our large warehouse. Stop over here in the residential area. Stop over here by the park. Stop in our pedestrian area. A stop in our shopping mall. What is going on? Oh, that's what's going on. Need that to be there. And we also need to come in and 
connect our tram road right here. Distance too short. That's fine, we can fix that. Alright. So now let's come back and do our tram stops. And I think it will let us do it now. Yes. So we'll put a stop there. Stop next to that sidewalk. Stop next to this sidewalk. And that should do us nicely. And now we want to have a line that goes the opposite direction. And making sure that we are mirroring where our stops are. Hmm, seems like it ignored that stop, which we can uh, fix that. So now we have a stop there. So now let's try and catch these trams as they are coming out. And we want to make sure that we have a decent capacity in our trams. So I think we're going to do, uh, let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. I'm gonna change the color of it. Let's do green, maybe? And tram line one. We also want to have similar capacity. And we want it to be pretty much the same color just because they're basically the same route. Let's make sure we don't have too many vehicles as well. So we'll let that come in and we will see how that works out for us in terms of our traffic flow. I really like these um, European suburbia houses. I feel like they look a lot more realistic and not crazy. Like this one does not look like something that is entirely realistic. Oh, where's another one? Oh, the solar panels aren't too outrageous. How do we like the way this looks? I don't feel like I like it. So we're going to change it to European Suburbia. And we will also come in and get rid of the specialization. Which is... I think we can kind of come through these different neighborhoods and choose... Uh, different looks for them. Just because a lot of these uh, vanilla assets... Ooh, I love this one. That is a beautiful house. We will go ahead and make that historical so that it doesn't upgrade into something ridiculous. But you can see already, now that I've changed this into European suburbia, it looks a lot more realistic in terms of those crazy houses that we get with the self-sufficient buildings. So let's check out our traffic flow and we are at 91%. No real hiccups. I want to see how this looks. Because I'm sure this is getting... Yeah, we're getting a pretty decent amount of... Uh, passengers and we aren't 
flooding the streets with trams or just having the trams uh, act as some kind of public transit so that people can get to uh, popular destinations and so that they can also get uh, to work. Very nice. So I think next episode, what uh, we're going to work on is getting some of these neighborhoods to have better looking houses, which we have a bunch of different uh, styles that we can use. We can use European, European suburbia, and uh, mid-century modern, maybe heart of Korea, maybe. Um, the only reason I'm hesitant is just because I think a lot of uh, those assets tend to be uh, more uh, more downtown, higher density than what we're really looking for in these suburban areas. But yeah, I think that is it for this episode, and we will jump into some detailing and be back for a city tour. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't already, please go ahead and like and subscribe below. I really enjoyed uh, building out this farm. All these giant orange groves. And I think... Uh, I know I talked about uh, redoing some of these neighborhoods. Uh, over here, I've changed pretty much everything to European suburbia except over here in Riverside where I'm going to let some of the more modern buildings exist. Just because it's going to be a a more higher income area, I would imagine, just because the land is very valuable. It's up against the river and such. And I also went ahead and expanded out some of our uh, uh, public transit network. And made sure that all of our public transit is free, just to make sure that we are prioritizing people using transit rather than relying on their cars just to help reduce the traffic in the city 
I also off camera went ahead and added in just a little slip entrance and exit over here so that our forestry traffic doesn't start intermingling with this traffic over here. I think next episode we're probably going to focus on increasing our population so that we can unlock uh, trains which will help us really start to increase our public transit network and also help us increase uh, tourism and cargo transport, which we want to make sure that we're prioritizing train over truck. Um, so we'll probably look into incorporating cargo network over here cargo network over here for our two industrial areas. Eventually we'll have coal industry up here, which we're going to want to incorporate a uh, cargo network too. And I'm also thinking about, you know, we always, uh, in a lot of the other uh, city skylines channels, there's a lot of public transit hubs where we have train and metro and bus and all forms of transit converging. And I think one thing that eventually we're going to work on probably in either this area or this here, somewhere in close proximity to the downtown or in a central location, uh, we're going to look at forming a cargo hub where we have all of our cargo transit happening, where we have a line coming from our farming industry and our forestry industry and our coal industry and eventually our oil industry all converging to where we have a, a place for all of our special products to be shipped to and moved around in a nice big warehousing and unique factory district. And now... Enjoy a brief city tour.